pop. You know what I'm True. saying? Well. What? What's up? No. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Because I'm saying a, a lot of masculine people do like to gossip too. I completely and wholeheartedly they do. disagree. They they just I would question say that they don't. Are you talking about men or women? I'm talking about both. Okay, a couple quick things. The women, I get it, because I think biologically there's um, always, as a woman, um, if you have a vagina, there will always be a, pro a proponent of you that wants to be feminine. You can disagree with me because you have much more knowledge in this than what I do, so feel free. I'd argue that dudes who claim to be masculine, that are gossipers, are not masculine. They just tell you that. They so purport what would you that say to that? you. Well, what would you say they were? If they, if they, they were are more men. feminine. They're more feminine. Because gossiping is not something that a young man or an old man should ever be a part of. Right? Because gossiping is something that's turned on by feelings. Maybe that's a New Jersey thing. Because I know a lot of men, a lot of men that's been in my life. My mom's husband, he's a huge gossiper and he's a very masculine man. I, 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 I or would aggressive, maybe I'd say aggressive. Yeah, but so like when you say so I think that's a better term because I think aggression is a very uh, beta characteristic. Okay. I think because aggression, how you display it, right? Like anger aggression is a beta characteristic. I don't feel like men should be angry. And in fact, what I think plagues people that look like us is this bravado or this ego, especially amongst each other. Like you heard the other day, the, the, the pop, the chicken, what's the chicken sandwich? Popeyes. Oh yeah. And the, the dude mm -hmm. shot, shot or stabbed Stab him the at, in the line. Like, like and we see this, and this is just on the news, but we all know in whatever hood that y'all in, you see this from time to time. Like that bravado that you can't let your ego go. Like that to me is a, a symptom of um, over-mothering and under-fathering in our community, right? There's, there's a lot of emotion that goes up into that that I feel like real men can control that. They can control uh, jealousy, they can control envy, right? Like they can control anger. Some people think it's still cool to be angry and to show like you can puff your chest out and scream at other people, right? Yeah, but I guess it depends on what you determine is, is a man because a lot of men feels like they feel like aggression is a part of being a man. A lot of men feel like they, they that need, bravo, that that feeling that mm, is them being a man. Yeah, but that aggression, I just think that it needs it needs restructuring. I agree with that. And and it needs restructuring cuz you know no disrespect to your stepfather. Was it? My mom's husband. Your mom's husband? <laughs> no disrespect to you, my G, and I hope he doesn't see this cuz oh, he he's going and all that aggression is going to come at me. <laughs> and like no disrespect. <laughs> However, um, I think it's misguided and I think it's misdirected. Um, I think um, being angry um, requires a lot of energy. Being angry, wanting revenge, vengeful people, like it requires mm -hmm. a lot of energy that's outside of building. It's outside of growing, right? It's outside of doing things well in life because it, it takes time to be angry, right? It takes you off your purpose, takes you off your meaning in life and your why. Right. So, so I would argue that the people that I've, that I've, done, I've gone through this multitude of times, right? Because like I, you know, um, I've told this story one other time. I had a buddy recently that got into a fight and got his teeth knocked out. And the reason why that happened is because another dude in his crew is always the dude in the crew that puffs his chest out. Mm. And then they got into the situation and my one boy got snucked heavy. And the dude that puffs his chest out, he does this on a dead, like, he's got Napoleon shit kind of going on. It's more his boy, it's less my boy. And when the situation, after the situation happened, I said to him, like, listen, yo, you have to really consider who you take onto your circle when you go out. Because mm -hmm. you are going to be a product of the people that's generally around you. Mm -hmm. And what he's displaying, each time that he does that, it doesn't come from a place of strength. Mm-hmm. It comes from an insecurity within himself. And insecurity is not a masculine trait, in my opinion. I think all people have a right to have insecurities. You have a right to it. You absolutely do. But you're but saying you shouldn't if you're a man? No, I'm saying having insecurities will never make a strong leader. So you're saying the president of this 
country has oh. no insecurities. None. I don't believe that. Oh, Donald Trump has not, none. He may not <laughs> say it. You don't give a it. shit. He may not say it. Listen. He may not say it out loud. But everybody He don't has say it. He don't display it. He does everything that he wants to and just keeps it moving. I think he's overwhelmed with confidence. I think I th he has confidence, but I think he may have. There's, there's something in there. There, if, if it's the smallest thing, like his big toe might be smaller than it's supposed to be. Everybody has an insecurity. Uh, yeah, there's insecurities that exist, but I think again, uh, a key component of a leader is someone that can control the emotions that they have within their head to push forward through thick and thin. Anyway, bringing the shit back to polyamory. 